it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, we're going to learn how to crochet the Bells of Ireland scarf. I thought this would be a perfect project for the month of March when some of us are celebrating St. Patrick's Day because of the name and this beautiful green tweed yarn. And it's just a really fun uh, lacy stitch with some fun, uh, beautiful tassels at either end of the scarf. And so the finished scarf measures about 60 inches long and the width is about eight inches wide and each one of these tassels is about four inches tall. So I'm going to walk you through the entire scarf from how to crochet this lacy stitch. Now you may recognize this if you hop on the Fiberflux YouTube channel frequently. This is the same stitch as our Heart You scarf and also the Raspberry Tweed Shawl. I just changed up the multiples and the yarn weight so uh, we could get a little bit of a different project here. But if you love this stitch, then you're gonna love this project too. When we're done making the main part of the scarf, we're gonna move on to the tassels, how to make the tassels, how to attach them, and how to do the finish work. And I like to make tassels. If you uh, are a frequent uh, visitor to this channel, I like to make my tassels using my hands only, and I'm gonna show you how I do that too as well. So let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is super helpful to get the length of the scarf you need, and then I'm going to be using a six millimeter J crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey hook. I know I get a lot of questions about my hook, so I just wanted to point that out, and I'll put the link down below for that as well. So let's talk a little bit about the yarn. I'm going to be using an Aran weight yarn called Wooly by Adria Phil. You'll need about 400 to 420 yards of an Aran weight yarn, and I'm going to be using that with the uh, J hook. This is a wool linen blend, but if you need to substitute yarn, just look for the Aran weight yarn. Um, you could probably even use a worsted weight yarn. You might want to try a little sampler. Mine has a lot of texture, so you might want to try a little, uh, maybe like work the first couple of rows and see how it kind of plays out with the texture and the type of yarn that you're using. But um, as far as yarn substitutions go, look for an Aran or worsted weight yarn for that. And um, that's it. So that's all you need, about 400 to 420 yards of that yarn, because we're going to be making the scarf and then adding some large tassels to our scarf as well. Okay, so to begin, we're going to do our starting chain. I'm just going to put this label aside. And we need to put a slip knot on our hook. So to make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make the loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop, and tighten. Okay, so our starting chain is 31. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and 31. Okay, so here's our starting chain. If your chain's a little tight, just go up a hook size for the starting chain only, and then you can come back to the J hook for the rest of your project. So let's start with row one. What we're going to do is single crochet in the 11th chain from the hook. So let me just zoom in a tiny bit so you can see it up close a little bit more. So this loop here does not count. So let's count 11 chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, and 11. So this chain here, we're going to work a single crochet, and that's going to create this big loop on the end, okay? So work your single crochet, and then what we're going to do is chain 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and then we're going to skip 3 chains. 1, 2, 3, and in the chain after that, we're going to single crochet into that next chain, just like that. And then we're going to chain five once again. I'm going to move that yarn ball. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to skip three chains. One, two, three. And in the chain after that, work another single crochet. 
Then we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Skip three chains. One, two, three. In the chain after that, work a single crochet. Then chain three. Chain five, I'm sorry. Chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Skip three chains. One, two, three. In the chain after that, work a single crochet. Okay, once again, chain five. One, two, three, four, five. Skip three chains, one, two, three, and in that very last chain, work a single crochet, okay? So this is kind of the foundation for our project. And as you can see, we now have a series of loops. We have one, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? My tweed is shedding just a tiny bit here. Okay, so next what we wanna do is move on to row two. So for row two, we're gonna chain five, one, two, three, four, five. Turn our work. Remember that single crochet we did at the beginning of the last row? We're gonna skip over that. And then we're gonna work a single crochet in this chain five space. So that's how it's written on the written pattern, the chain five space. And that simply is when we made that chain, we created this space, okay? We're gonna work a single crochet into that space. Okay, so just work your single crochet into there. And then we're gonna skip that next single crochet that we did in the previous row. And then in the next chain five space here, we're going to work seven double crochets. So to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into that chain five space, bring up a loop, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. So that's one, uh, one double crochet. So let's make a second one, two, and three, and then we're going to slide things over a little bit, and then we're going to work four double crochet, and five, six, and seven just like that, okay? So there is our first little fan of our lace. Okay, so then we're gonna skip the next single crochet from the previous row. Then we're gonna work a single crochet in that next chain five space that you come to. Okay, so it kinda like puts that fan back down. Then what we're gonna do is chain five. One, two, three, four, five, and then work a single crochet into the next chain five space. We're creating that little center lattice panel. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is work seven double crochet in that next chain five space. Okay, so here, this loop here, work your seven double crochets. We're gonna make another one of those fans. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so we have our next fan of our row. Okay, so this last chain five space that we have, we're gonna work a single crochet into that chain space. And then we're gonna chain two, one, two. And then we're gonna work a double crochet in that, so in the written pattern it's called the sixth chain from the last single crochet of the previous row. So basically that's gonna be at the end here. See this chain at the end? We're gonna work a double crochet right into that chain that's at the very edge there. Okay? And so row two is complete. So you can see we have our two fans and our lattice. Okay? Now let me grab the 
partially finished scarf. Let me zoom out so you can see it a little bit nicer. So as you can see, these fans, as we work them, they're going to start building on themselves, okay? So let's move on to row three, and that will be the last row of the stitch repeat, because you're going to be repeating rows two and three, two and three, over and over for the rest of the project, okay? So let's zoom back in so we can see our stitches. So for row three, what we're going to do is chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six and then turn our work and then what we're going to do is we're going to skip that double crochet and that chain and that single crochet and we're going to look at this first fan so um, if any of you made the heart you scarf this is a the same stitch pattern we're just using different yarn and a different uh, starting chain and stitch count but what I gave, the tip that I gave for that is to look at your fan and you want to kind of separate it because there's chains here at the bottom and there's chains here. So I like to get my fingers in between those and just really isolate it so I can see the fan. And this fan is made up of seven double crochets, remember from the previous row. So we're going to work it into the second double crochet. So you can count one and two. We're going to work a single crochet right into that second double crochet of that fan, just like that, okay? Then we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to skip three double crochets. So one, two, three. And in that double crochet after that, we're going to work a single crochet. Okay, so that kind of puts a loop at the top of this fan, which you're going to be working your double crochets into that later. Okay, so let's move right along here. So then what we're going to do is chain five, one, two, three, four, five, and then we're going to work a single crochet into that chain five space from the previous row. And then we're going to chain five again, one, two, three, four, five, and then we're at our next fan. So just a little tip, this is what I like to do is just kind of separate that fan so you can really see those double crochets and count the second double crochet in on your fan. Work your single crochet into that. Okay, next you're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to skip three of these double crochets. One, two, three. And then work a single crochet into that next double crochet. And then to finish off the row, we're going to chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we're going to put our last single crochet of the row into that turning chain. So you can see it, it's going to be like the one, two, third one up there. Add your single crochet to that third chain up on that end there. Okay? All right. So. That is how you work rows two and three of the pattern. So for the rest of your scarf, you're just going to be repeating. Let me grab the other part here so you can see more of it. You're just going to be repeating rows two and three, two and three, over and over and over until your scarf is as, whoops, I have it upside down, until your scarf is as long as you'd like it to be. So I'm going to continue working my scarf over here, and then when we rejoin, I'm going to show you how to finish off your scarf, and then we're going to make some really beautiful tweed tassels together. Okay, I've been working on my scarf, adding those rows, and I'm just coming up to the very last row. So I'm just going to do my chain two. and then my double crochet to finish off the row. So the scarf is complete, the main part of the scarf. Now what we want to do is grab our tapestry needle because we're going to be doing some tassels and weaving in some ends and some finish work. But before we do that, I wanted to point out that you'll want to end on the row that has the double crochet fans. It looks a little bit nicer if you end on that row versus the one with all the chains because you'll just have like loops at the top of your scarf. But if you end on the fans like this, you'll have a nice little finished looking scallop at the top. So what you'll want to do next when you're finished, when you've uh, made it as long as you want it to be, and we talked about sizing a little bit earlier in the video, but of course you can change that depending on how many rows you'd like to make. 
So what you'll want to do next is just cut the yarn and then fasten off. And then we want to weave in all of our ends. So what you'll want to do is grab your tapestry needle and go ahead and thread that. Now I have lots of ends, so I'm going to just show you one of them and then we can weave in the other ends um, on our own. But you'll thread your tapestry needle and then you'll just go in one direction here with your tapestry needle and then come back in the other direction as well. Okay, that'll help lock that tail into place. Then grab your scissors again and just snip that yarn, okay? So go ahead and repeat for all the other ends on your scarf and then we're gonna rejoin, I have a couple back here, we're gonna rejoin and work on some tassels next. Okay, so I went through and I wove in all the ends. Now it's tassel time. As a side note, you don't have to do tassels. Some people aren't into them, but I absolutely love them. I put them in all kinds of projects. So I went ahead and added tassels to one side, and I just think it gives it a really nice finished look. And when you wear a scarf and you wanna keep it around your neck, it adds a little weight. They're almost like little tiny weights to hold your scarf in place. So I did three here. Now this is the bottom. So if you remember, we did the, our starting chain. I put one at either corner, and then I did one right in the center, okay? Now you can place yours however you like. I've also seen trends where people are putting them just at either end. Um, you could put two more at the bottom of these two fans. You could really do whatever you want. You could do fringe, you could do pom-poms, but I really loved with this tweed, I thought the tassels looked really kind of fancy. So what we're gonna do is we've done one side, I'm gonna head on over to the other end of this scarf, and we're gonna make the rest of them. Now if you notice, I do get this question a lot whenever I do lace projects. Um, the starting edge and the finished edge, like the edge that where we just left off when, when we just finished our scarf a few minutes ago, they look a little bit different. So um, once you get the tassels tied on, it'll be less obvious. Uh, but if that bothers you, you could always add like a single crochet edge to either end and or a couple sing rows of single crochet just to get uh, the symmetry that you're after. For me, it doesn't bother me so much. I kind of just leave it like that. But we're going to put three tassels on this end as well. And I'm going to do one in either end once again, and then one in the center here where this little arc is. So let me show you how to do the tassel. Now for this one, I wanted a really nice full tassel. See how these tassels are, they're a little bit big and full. So I went ahead and made the first two, because remember we're doing three, and we're gonna make the third one together. So I'm just gonna put these aside for just a moment, and we're gonna go ahead and I have a little bit more yarn. We're gonna go ahead and make the other one. Now when you're making your scarf, make sure you save yourself enough yarn for, to do the tassels. If you find that you totally ran out of yarn and you want to do tassels still, you could go get more yarn or you could just coordinate it. Like I could do like a taupe or a black or um, maybe one of these shades of green that's in this tweed or something like that, but you could do a coordinating tassel as well if you totally run out of yarn. And that's a great way to use scraps up as well. So let's make our tassel. We're gonna cut two pieces of yarn roughly 12 inches long, okay? You don't really have to measure, just maybe the length of your forearm if you want a rough measurement. Okay, so cut two roughly 12 inch pieces of yarn. Now we're gonna make the tassel. There are fancy tassel makers out there, but I do them in my hand. I don't use any fancy tools except for a pair of scissors and I use a tapestry needle to get the ends in and I'll show you all that in just a moment. So for our particular tassels, you can make your tassels narrow, you can make them nice and full, but for our particular tassels, we're gonna wrap the yarn around our hand 50 times, okay? So here's, uh, I'm gonna use all four fingers. If you want a short tassel, wrap it around less fingers, but I'm gonna go around all four fingers to get that nice, large, full tassel that we're after, okay? So make the yarn come down the front of your hand like so, and then just start wrapping. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 
26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, and 50. Okay, so make the other strand come down as well and go ahead and cut. Now you notice I'm leaving a couple inches of uh, leeway there. So next we're going to slip this little bundle carefully off of our hands and kind of leave a finger in place at the top of this bundle, okay? Grab one of the pieces of yarn that we cut earlier and you're just going to carefully send it through the middle of this bundle. See how it makes a big loop? And then what we're going to do is tie the top. Okay, so go ahead and tie the very top of your bundle nice and tight. You don't want to pull too tight because the yarn could break, but you do want it to be nice and snug. And then what you're going to do is I like to kind of straighten things out a little bit. And then you can lay your second piece of yarn down on the table like this and go ahead and bring it up and tie. Okay. Whoops, I tied mine a little bit too high and it slid. But you want to tie it so that you have that nice little tassel top. Okay? Might have to kind of push and pull a little bit. Let's grab one of our pre made ones. You want to get it so that it looks like that. It almost looks like a doll. I always think about a doll when I do these. Um, so you want to tie it nice and tight. And I like to do a nice sturdy knot. Okay? Then what we're going to do is take our scissors and we're going to cut all these loops. Now you might want to get a little bit bigger pair than I have here, but this is what I had sitting here, so I'm just going to use these. But a larger pair of scissors might work a little bit better. Okay, and then you just want to cut all these loops out of here so that all of your strands are nice and straight. Just make sure you don't have any loops left. Okay? You can kind of move it around, make sure you got everything. Okay? So then what we're going to do is, you might have some crumbs whenever you cut large amounts of yarn like this, when you give it a haircut, you might get some crumbs. We're going to take all three tassels that we made and let's turn our scarf so it's facing us. Okay? So, like I said, we're going to tie one at either end. Just like that. Just tie it right on there. I just went right into that chain space and just tied it right on. Nothing fancy. And then I'm going to get the other tassel. And we're going to just go right into that, that space there in the corner. We're going to take it to the edge as much as we can. Okay. And then the last one, we're going to tie it to the center arc. That's the centermost area of this, this side of the scarf. Okay. Now, once you get these tied on, we have a couple of ends, actually quite a bit of ends here sticking out. So there's two types of ends with tassels, and weaving in your ends with tassels is super duper easy. So what you want to do is thread your tapestry needle, and then instead of weaving it back up into the scarf, a really easy way is to go down through the middle of the tassel. Okay, so just go down and make it come out the other end and pull it all the way through. And it just kind of disappears. Now we'll trim all this bottom stuff in just a moment. Okay, find your next tail that you used when you tied the tassel on and do the same thing. Just repeat what you just did. And see that band when we tied that? Make sure you go up under that band through the middle of the tassel. Okay, so that's the next one. One more end I like to weave in is when you tie this on, remember that band we tied on? One of them goes nice and straight down. One of them kind of sticks up a little bit. It's kind of goofy looking. So you want to take your tapestry needle one more time and go up under that band and just get that one to lay down a little bit nicer. Now I see how it looks much, much nicer. Okay, and then finally for your tassel, you want to even up the bottom. So just uh, give it a little snip and make sure all those ends, doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but just get it as nice and even as possible. And then your tassel, let me just get these side pieces. I have a few, there we go, okay. So then your tassel is ready to go. So just repeat for the other two. 
Okay, so all of our tassels have been added on and it looks great. So that is how you crochet the Bells of Ireland scarf. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again. Bye -bye.